What do you mean by a buck converter? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome back to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term buck converter? Well, let's find out. So buck converter is a type of DC to DC converter. That is what it does is that it converts one form of DC voltage to another form. So to be precise over here, a buck converter is a step down DC to DC converter. That is if a particular voltage, input voltage VI is given, it steps down this VI to the output voltage. That is whatever input voltage is given at the output this particular voltage will be reduced. So let me state an example here. Let us assume that we have taken a particular device, say a speaker. Let us assume that we have taken a speaker system like this. And let us assume that a particular 12 volt power supply is given to this. That is, this is connected to a 12 volt adapter. So whatever voltage comes inside this is 12 volt. And now to give an input to the speaker, we have to connect a particular USB device. So a USB device is connected like this. But if this 12 volt is supplied to this particular USB device, the USB device will burst. That is, it will get destroyed if this particular 12 volt is supplied to the USB device. So therefore, the voltage must be reduced when it has to be supplied to this particular USB device. Therefore, what we do is that this particular 12 volt supply is connected to a buck converter that is a step down converter and this particular step down converter's output is connected to this particular USB source. So therefore, this particular voltage can be stepped down or reduced to be provided to this particular USB. That is, a USB operates generally at around 4 volt or 5 volt. So this particular buck converter can be used to provide this particular 5 volt source to this particular USB. So this thus is the basic idea behind what you refer to as a buck converter. That is, it is a step down DC to DC converter. That is, it reduces the output voltage. So here, a buck converter is very efficient. It is highly efficient because converting a higher voltage to a lower voltage is very efficient because there is no loss in voltage. So therefore, this is highly efficient. This has an efficiency of around 90%. So I have written it down. Buck converter, it is a step down DC to DC converter where buck means that the voltage will decrease. So thus at the load, the voltage will step down while the current gets stepped up. So here it has a very high efficiency, that is the efficiency is greater than 90%. It can be used in devices where the voltage can be supplied to USBs, RAMs, etc. by stepping down or reducing the source voltage. So this thus is the basic idea behind buck converters. So now let us draw the circuit diagram of a buck converter. So first it will have a source voltage like this. Let this be the source voltage say Vs. And now this source voltage is connected to a switch. And here a particular diode is connected like this. A diode is connected in this configuration. And this then is connected to an inductor like this. And this then is connected to a particular load like this. And this load is connected here. And across this load, a particular capacitor is connected like this. So this thus is the basic diagram of a buck converter. But this is the voltage source. This is a particular inductor. This is a capacitor. This is the load. And this is a particular diode. So the output voltage is obtained across this particular load. Okay, so therefore this voltage source Vs must be stepped down and must be supplied to this particular load. So for this, what we use here is that we use the charging property of an inductor. So we know that whenever a particular voltage source is supplied to a particular inductor, as the current increases, the energy is stored in the magnetic field that is associated with this particular inductor. Okay. So now first let us consider the on situation. That is, let us first switch on this particular switch. So when this switch is switched on or when it is turned on, what we observe is that a current starts flowing like this. So therefore it flows through the inductor and it flows like this, completing a loop. So it flows through the load and it completes the circuit 
like this. So therefore the current starts flowing and therefore a polarity is obtained across this inductor where this is positive and this is negative. So now what we see is that a partial minority current also flows through this particular capacitance. Okay. So this is what happens when the switch is in the on position. So when it is in the on position now the energy gets stored within the magnetic field of this particular inductor and therefore this particular inductor is getting charged. It is getting charged when the switch is on. Now let us consider the situation where the switch is now turned off. This switch is now in the off position. Now when this switch is in the off position, what we observe is that the polarity of this particular inductor gets reversed. That is, this becomes positive and this becomes negative. And therefore, this inductor starts discharging current and therefore the current will flow like this. It will flow through the load and it goes here, it goes here and it will flow through the diode and it will flow back like this. And it forms a loop like this and here also partial current is found to be flowing through the capacitor as well. So here in this diagram why we provided the capacitor here is that when the inductor starts discharging it will have some amount of AC components or ripple components present inside the current when this particular inductor starts discharging. So therefore in order to filter out all those AC components and to provide pure DC voltage across this load we provide this particular capacitor across this particular load. That is why this particular capacitance is provided here. As simple as that guys, as simple as this. So now when this particular switch is open, the current starts flowing like this within this particular loop. This entire system is omitted now. It only flows through this like this. And a partial current flows through this capacitor in order to remove the AC components and provide pure DC to the load. So this thus is the basic principle behind the working of a particular buck converter. So now again when the energy that is present inside this inductor falls below a particular value then the switch is again turned on. And when the switch is again turned on the polarity here it gets reversed. This becomes plus this becomes minus and therefore the current starts flowing through this particular loop. That is the entire loop. Current doesn't flow through the diode. The diode doesn't conduct. So therefore the current starts flowing in this particular loop and some minority amount of current flows through the capacitor. So here the current does not flow through the diode because when it flows like this the diode is in the reverse bias condition and therefore it does not conduct current. So therefore it flows through this particular loop as simple as that. This thus is the basic idea or the basic principle behind the working of a buck DC to DC voltage converter as simple as that. So now let us see the waveforms that are associated with a particular buck converter. So first let us see the waveform at the output that is at the load. Let's see what the waveform that is associated with the output voltage that is V0. So now across the X axis we have the time. So therefore this is the time for which the particular switch is on and this is the time for which the switch is off. This is the time for which the switch is on and this is the time for which the switch is off. So I've divided it into on condition and off condition. So first let us see the output voltage that is the voltage that is obtained across the particular load. So now when the switch is in the on position the current starts flowing like this. So therefore the voltage across V0 would be maximum that is the maximum voltage that would be obtained here is equal to the voltage source itself. So therefore at this particular condition that is when the switch is on for that time period we will obtain a maximum voltage like this which is equal to Vs. And now when the switch is off, we will obtain a minimum voltage, that is the voltage would be minimum like this. Again when the switch is on, a maximum voltage is obtained like this. And again when the switch is off, a minimum voltage would obtain like this. So therefore this does is the waveform of the output voltage in the case of a buck converter. So now next let us see the case of the current at the inductor. Okay, so now what we observe here is that when the switch is first turned on, the inductor current starts increasing. That is the voltage would provide a particular current onto the inductor and therefore the inductor current will start increasing, 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 increasing up to a particular maximum value. And then after this, when the switch is turned off, this inductor starts discharging and therefore the current starts decreasing. 
So that is what happens in the case of an inductor current. So therefore here it will have a certain minimum inductor current value and a maximum inductor current value. So therefore first when the switch is turned on the current increases, the inductor current increases from the minimum value to the maximum value like this. And now when the switch is turned off the inductor starts discharging and therefore it will decrease from the maximum value to the minimum value like this. Again when the switch is turned on it will increase to a maximum value and again when the switch is turned off it will decrease to a minimum value. So therefore this thus is a waveform of the inductor current that is the current that is obtained here the inductor current IL. Next let us see the diode current. So now when the switch is turned on, so when the switch is in the on position we know that the current flows through this particular loop, it flows through the outside loop that is no current flows through this particular diode because when the switch is turned on current can't flow like this because this diode is in the reverse bias condition therefore in the on condition no current flows through the diode that is the current is over here the current waveform is here. And now when the switch is turned off we see that the particular inductor starts discharging and the current starts flowing like this and therefore the waveform obtained is like this. Again when the switch is turned on we see that no current flows through the diode and again when the switch is turned off the inductor starts discharging and this diode current will be equal to this. So this thus is the waveform of the diode current that is seen in the case of a buck converter. And now the waveform of a capacitor current is obtained like this. This is the waveform of the current that is flowing through the capacitor because this capacitor is solely placed for the purpose of removing the ripple or the AC current components that are present here. So therefore the average value of this capacitor current is zero. So these thus are the basic waveforms that are associated with a particular buck converter. As simple as this. So now when the switch is in the on position the voltage across this particular inductor is given as VL is equal to Vs minus V0 that is the difference between the source voltage and the output voltage that is the voltage that we obtain across this particular inductor and now the current that is flowing through this capacitor is given as IC is equal to the inductor current IL minus the output current I0 that is whatever current is flowing through the inductor that current minus the output current that is the amount of current that is flowing through the capacitor so that is what you refer to as a capacitance current so this is the case when the switch is in the on position. Now when the switch is in the off position the inductor voltage VL plus the output voltage V0 must be equal to 0 and therefore what we obtain here is that the inductor voltage VL is equal to minus of the output voltage V0 and the capacitor current IC is equal to IL minus I0 that is the inductor current minus the output current. So this is in the on condition and this is in the off condition. So now applying something which is referred to as voltage second balance. So what this states is that the voltage across the inductor in the on condition multiplied with the time for which this particular switch is on plus the voltage in the off condition multiplied with the time with which this particular switch is off is equal to 0 that is VL on into T on plus VL off into T off is equal to 0 this is what this particular voltage second balance states that is voltage in the on condition into time for which it is on plus voltage in the off condition into time for which it is off is equal to 0. So therefore here we know the values for VL on and VL off that is VL on is given as Vs minus V0 and here we know that the duty cycle D is equal to T on by T therefore T on is given as T on is equal to duty cycle into T. T. That is the expression for T on. So substituting this T on over here we get Vs minus V0 into DT plus this VL off we got it as minus V0. This is equal to minus V0 into T off is given as 1 minus D into T which is equal to 0. So therefore from this we get the value of the output voltage V0 is equal to D into Vs. 
where the value of d varies from 0 to 1. So therefore from this what we observe is that the value of the output voltage will always be less than the source voltage because it is multiplied by a factor d which is in between 0 to 1 and therefore it will always be less than the input voltage source. So therefore it is a step down kind of DC to DC voltage converter. So this, this is why we say that a buck converter is a step down voltage converter because the output voltage is always less than the input voltage or the voltage source because the value of the duty cycle varies between 0 to 1. Next let us apply something referred to as the current second balance. So in current second balance exactly similar to what we saw in the voltage second balance here the current in the on position multiplied with the time for which it is on plus the current in the off position into the time for which is off is equal to zero. That is IC on into T on plus IC off into T off is equal to 0. Here the value of IC on and IC off are given here which is both IL minus I0. So therefore substituting the values here we get IL minus I0 into DT plus IL minus I0 into 1 minus D into T is equal to 0. So therefore from this what we obtain is that the inductor current IL is equal to the output current I0. So therefore from this what we have to deduce is that whatever inductor current flows that current flows through the output current and therefore this is why we say that the average current flowing through the capacitor is 0 that is which implies that average IEC is equal to 0. This is because this capacitor is used solely for the purpose of filtering out the AC components or the ripple components that are present here in this particular circuit. As simple as that. So therefore this thus sums up of what you refer to as a buck converter or a step down DC to DC converter. So here we saw the basic idea of a buck converter and then we saw the circuit diagram and the working of a buck converter along with the waveforms and the expressions that are associated with a buck converter. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a buck DC to DC converter and we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.